Captain Midnight. If I asked most people off the top of their head to tell me what Carlito's Way, the first Spider-Man movie, and Jurassic Park all have in common, I'd be surprised if many people could immediately answer that they were all written by longtime screenwriter David Kep. Arriving into the world of big blockbuster movies in the early 90s, Kep has written some of the biggest movies of the last few decades. But for many film fans, his name being attached to a project doesn't exactly equal excitement. Even though a lot of his movies are pretty beloved and together have grossed more than $2 billion at the box office. Sure, part of the reason for this is that, to some, he'll always be the guy who wrote the fourth Indiana Jones movie. But I think it goes a little deeper than that. Kep screenplays, for better or worse, always prioritize two things, efficiency and structure. Another thing you might have noticed is that my three examples, along with plenty of other films he's written, are all adaptations of someone else's work. He's written original films too, but his bread and butter is adapting work to the screen. And the reason he lands these jobs is clear. Efficiency. There is a scene early on in Spielberg's War of the Worlds where Cruz argues with his boss at the dock. Ray! Harry! Whoa! I need you back in four instead of 12. I got half a career coming uh, in. No, 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 I can't. I'm on a 12-hour blow. You know what your problem is? I can think of a couple of women be happy to tell you. Now, this is not a great scene. We said meh. M-E-H. Meh. For one thing, Tom Cruise plays an average blue-collar guy named Ray in this movie when acting like a normal human being kind of plays against all of his strengths as an actor. And yeah, the dialogue is a little corny. But early scenes like this set up Cruz's character quickly and efficiently. 10 minutes in and we're off to the races. There's a certain art to that efficiency which seems almost entirely lost on today's bloated blockbusters. It's no wonder, then, that directors and studios trust Kep to parse down novels and mythologies that can be complicated or convoluted. He's proved over and over again that he can turn them into efficient, filmable material. And of course, with that efficiency comes Kep's strict adherence to structure, which can be both a huge strength and a big weakness. A positive example of this comes from Spider-Man. When our hero is just about to defeat the Green Goblin and all the plot threads need to start wrapping up, this happens. I've been like a father to you. Be a son to me now. I have a father. His name was Ben Parker. That's a smartly written scene. It resolves the last thing Peter said to his uncle before his death in a satisfying way, just before the credits roll. I don't mean to lecture and I don't mean to preach. And I know I'm not your father. Then stop pretending to be. Right. This is the way blockbusters are supposed to operate, right? Now, a less generous reading is that the scene is both obvious and manipulative, telling the audience exactly what to feel and lazily spelling out any subtext that could be found in the scene. And I could probably understand this point of view too, although I think anyone who says it also probably are the same people trying to convince me that Knights of Cups is a good movie, but whatever. For a big superhero action film, it's solid screenwriting. And all you have to do is look at the amazing Spider-Man films to start missing David Kep. These movies, for all their charms, have disastrous scripts. Here, the death of Uncle Ben is brought to an emotionally satisfying conclusion. Here, other than Aunt May being kind of sad, it's almost completely forgotten about after Peter decides to search for his killer and fails at it and then just kind of drops it, I guess. Seriously, if you wanted the conclusion of that story, you had to buy the amazing Spider-Man 2 video game, which... Yeah, yeah, don't do that. But I'm getting off track. The point is, Kep may not have written the best script of 2002, but it worked. 
And it's one of the reasons that that movie stuck with people in a way that a lot of modern superhero films don't. But of course, this commitment to efficiency and structure have plenty of downsides. Kep has never written a movie that anyone would describe as challenging. He directed Mordecai, which is definitely one of the most challenging movies to sit through, but he didn't write it, so we're going to ignore it. The point is, his scripts hit the beats they're supposed to hit, and many times they hit them well, but they rarely experiment or push the story into unexpected places. But this can sometimes work fine. Going back to our initial three examples, if there's another thing that these movies have in common, it's that they're all directed by guys with a very distinctive style. Sam Raimi has a slightly campy charm and tons of visual inventiveness that he's brought to most of his movies. Spielberg is the master at making the audience feel exactly the way he wants them to. And Brian De Palma is probably the best known stylistic filmmaker of his generation. They all brought a lot of personality to Kep's material. But when someone like Ron Howard, a director who doesn't have much in the way of a signature style, tries to direct his screenplay, you end up with one of the most forgettable trilogy of movies ever made. I haven't talked about that infamous Indiana Jones movie much, but honestly, even though it will make fanboys online hate him until the end of time, I don't really blame Cap too much for that one. He got stuck with a premise that he himself has said he wasn't a big fan of, and he tried to make it work. In the early scenes of that movie, which have been overshadowed by the fridges and the Tarzan yelling and the bad CGI, are actually pretty good. It's not a great script, but I think most of the blame for that lies at the feet of Spielberg and Lucas. So then George came to me one day, I'll never forget this conversation, said, you know, you might be right about this alien thing. Maybe we shouldn't do aliens. I said, George, I love you. That's the best news you've ever given me. He said, yeah, they're not aliens. They're, they're kind of extra dimensional. I said, what? He said, ever hear a th string theory? Right now, Kep, who is clearly hurt by the reception to Crystal Skull, is busy working on the script to a fifth Indiana Jones movie. My guess is that it will be efficient, smartly structured, and yeah, maybe a little bland. And it will be up to Spielberg and his new producers at Disney to turn it into something audiences will love. For better or worse, Kep's skill set is highly valuable in Hollywood. They may not be sexy or hip, but efficiency and an understanding of structure are two things that I don't see falling out of fashion anytime soon. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.